Joining us in studio, <clears throat> Bill Center Mitch Morse, fresh off a super productive game against the Dallas Cowboys, in which, uh, I don't know, I would call that one of your best bully ball games uh, since you've been here. I'm sure you can come up with others off the top of your head, but uh, Bill's fans got a charge out of what that thing looked like on Sunday. Yeah, I'd say it's uh, it's pretty unique. First of all, thank you both for having yeah. me on. Oh, happy to have you. Uh, second of all, it was it was a new, unique one, and, and one that uh, it wasn't dictated like that prior to the game. It was one of those things that you, you're you not feeling out a game, but you're seeing how a team's going to play you. And we also understood what kind of passers they had. Right. Um, and so to limit those opportunities, we knew we had to be productive. And also kudos to the play callers and the coaches for putting us in positions where we could, uh, I mean, stick to it, right? Right. I mean, Joe Brady's talked about how it's hard as a play caller to, uh, I don't know, say put pounding. your pride aside, but yeah. like just trust it. And he yeah. did. And kudos to him. So for us, it was just kind of. Uh, sticking to what the defense gave us, and a lot of the times the running backs made us right. Yeah, and it's interesting. I, not for nothing, you know, James Cook, Offensive Player of the Week. Uh, congratulations to you guys for that. Yeah, that I mean, goes right. to you guys as much right? as because you got You guys got to be. You got to feel a certain sense of at least, if not satisfaction, certainly contentment for a minute after that game ended when you, you had the dominating performance like you did. It's hard to do that in the NFL against anybody. Um, like, like you said, so many things have to come together. Sure. You're a play caller. The running back, the matchups, and then mm -hmm. the inability or, or, you know, n lack of conviction to adjust defensively. Sure. So all of those things have to kind of come together, and then you guys, you know, certainly made it happen. Well, I, I like to think the run game is a symbiotic relationship between the offensive line and also the receivers. I, mm -hmm. I think, I mean, talk about the prideful game. Receivers, I mean, to be able to just time after time after time again not get their number called, and you know, a lot of these runs were getting to the outside, bouncing outside. These receivers were blocking their tails off. So, um, yeah, I think for the most part, those you know, you give yourself a 24-hour period where you mm -hmm. reflect on the game, get to enjoy that, but at the same time, not to be a coach here. But <clears throat> we understand that if we want to get to where we want to get to, it's time to take that next step and move on. There are a lot of people who are of the opinion, Mitch, that this is probably the most gifted and effective offensive line in the McDermott era. I'm not going to ask you to rank it because I know that's not kind of what you do and you'd feel you'd be disrespecting previous teammates. Absolutely. What I will ask you is when did you feel that this five really gelled and hit their stride where, they're, where most of the hiccups that you often have you know, in the early stages of pulling a sure. new group of five together will happen from time to time. When did you guys kind of really feel like you hit your stride here in this season? Yeah, that's a good question, and one that you'd like to say you're still working on achieving, right? Like you still feel like there's there's more to this for us, and I, I think that's the approach we take in practice and how we attack meetings, and uh, Cromer treats us like professionals, so we – uh, reciprocate that and work when it's time to work and rest when it's time to rest. And um, I would say just every game as, as we continued. And then I would say even though we lost uh, that Denver game where we were able to run the ball effectively, um, we, 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 we felt like we pulled, you know, we pulled each other aside and said, listen, we, you know, the, the fate of this team is in everyone's hands, but we got to do, continue doing our job and do the best we can. And, and, and understand that just because where the standings are and stuff, there you get pride in being a professional. And I think that's tough for young guys, and it's also tough for pretty old, you know, older guys. But when you get closer to the end rather than the beginning of your career, I'm not saying you know, whatever, but you understand these chances are fleeting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I'm just very fortunate to have a group of guys who are younger than me that really take pride in being professionals. And, uh, and a lot of guys who are backup roles too, um, they can plug and play, and, uh, and it's just a real special group that really cares about each other. You come in on a short week. Uh, you play on Saturday, weird game, uh, kind of a weird feeling, mm -hmm. but still. Time change. Time yeah, change, yeah, sure. all that, yeah. West Coast. Um, and you're going to a team, and I don't know if you've, you probably have not been through this as a pro where you've got an interim head coach mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, I've been through it way, way back and also was part of the other side where mm -hmm. I, I, I was playing for an interim head coach, mm -hmm. and twice I did it. Um, or I was at least on the team. It the bump that a team might get from changing coaches, and I just said this in the last segment, has a lot to do with 
and he's, I'll use the word, but yeah. the hatred they had for the last guy. <laughs> sure. Right? If the last guy was, sure. you know, Captain Bly, yeah. and you wanted to be the guy that threw him overboard, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you do get a bump. Totally. But if it was a guy that's like, man, I, we should have played better for him, mm -hmm. and he was, I kind of liked him, if, you know, then mm -hmm. it's not a bump. You know, so that has everything to do with the, you know, the L.A. Chargers. Sure. It has nothing to do with the Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. Now, Give some insight into that you, thought process. Yeah, that's that's a good point, right? Like, it, it's that you're you're damned if you presume in this in this business, that's right? right? Yeah. So uh, we're not, we're presuming uh, the former in those re two regards. I, I think they're going to have a spark, and they take pride in being professionals, mm -hmm. and they have ac outstanding personnel. And um, if you watch the film, you're you're very impressed. So, uh, like any week, we understand that that the competitive edge is going to be who shows up and out competes the person. I know the competitive edge is being competition, but it's the truth. And, and also I would, I would I mean, you so we saw it to happen to the Raiders. I mean, the, the week after McDaniels left, they were on fire. So, yeah. um, we've seen it happen this year. And, uh, and so we're just going to go out and we're going to, we're going to control what we can control and understand that, uh, it could be an onslaught of things we see, or they could stick to a few things where we could, you could expect anything, but the one thing we are expecting is for them to be fired up. How is Christmas preparations going in the Morris household? Are you guys all set? Because I got to tell you right now, with the kids at your age, yeah. you are in the wheelhouse of like the best Christmases because the Santa thing is in <laughs> full, it's no full doubt. bore, you know, the whole, like, how's the house? Is it ready? Well, I, I got to give credit to my wife, right? Like she takes so much of the brunt in season and the, and, and the home front. And she also takes a lot of brunt in regards to the presents and doing that. So when you, they write from mom and dad, it's from mom, and she just <laughs> CC dad on the whole thing. So, uh, it's so you're not alone. No, it's or I'm so fortunate and blessed to have her on my side. And uh, the kids are really cool. My son's a little too young, but my daughter's really wants a mermaid for uh, oh wow for, yeah for Christmas. So we're a doll, of course. Now. Yes, and not a live one be a tall order, yeah, yeah, especially with the weather we have here. That'd be yeah, tough, yeah, that'd to, be uh, tough upkeep. There. Yeah, a lot of people are using those for sled rinks, so right. uh, we can, <laughs> unless you want the mermaid to freeze to death, we're going to be kind of SOL here in, the, yeah. in Orchard Park. Now, do you, I'm going to ask you this, because I was fortunate enough to miss this window. It, does the elf on the shelf exist in the house? Elf or? on the shelf is a no-go in our house. Why? Um, I I just Wise learned mom. about it this past week from my wife. Uh, maybe call me. I, I had to have a briefing outside. It yeah. turns out we're all blissfully naive because yes. it sounds yes. like a whole thing. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Uh, Pro Bowl voting, Mitch, runs through December 25th. I know you are not a self-gloss person, but you've put together a pretty nice season here. Fans can vote basically through Christmas. At ProBowl.com oh, slash Lord, vote. Look at that um, good Lord. Yeah, it's a good one, man. They That's don't even have any shine spry, coming off your head there. Spry, full, just which, el elbows feel great in that picture. Look <laughs> at that. Right. Oh, my God. Uh, but there is no a, limit. That's definitely a preseason That's the. Yeah. I think that the first day I was here. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, the, beer, the beard is considerably shorter than it is now. I will say yeah. that. But there is no limit, fans, to how many times you can vote for Mitch or any of the other bills that you believe are worthy. And fans can also post on Twitter, now known as X, uh, to place votes that begin December 11th and, as, as I said, run through Christmas. So if you're sitting around the house because you got the day off uh, Friday or this weekend, there is still time to get your votes in for Mitch and anybody else on the roster. It's the last chance window. And here's the most important thing. On Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, if you get on social and vote, the vote counts double. So you want to vote twice for Mitch, you can do it in one fell swoop. You want to vote for Dion? Anybody else? Dion, Dion, um, yeah, push Dion hard. Even Spencer's had a hell Spencer of a year. Hey, Spencer's probably had his yeah. best year in a Bills uniform no this year. Wouldn't you say no so, doubt. Mitch? I, I would a thousand percent agree. He's, yeah. he's put on a beautiful, a beautiful display of football. And I'll say this too: uh, Osiris Torrance has been everything they hoped he would be. I think as a rookie, he's been durable, dependable, no uh, the big body they were looking for. Certainly no athletic enough down inside. Um, I, I noticed something about him the other day that I hadn't thought about. I used to play with a guy named Jerry Ostrowski. He was a 6'3", 330-pound guy, mm -hmm. enormously long arms. That's beautiful. And <laughs> flat feet. Oh, well, yeah. And no, anyone you who doesn't know, him. anyone doesn't right. know, Cyrus got some funky yeah. feet. He looked, his but feet look funky feet. His feet look like an elephant's foot. Like it's round, and it's like... <laughs> 
<laughs> right? The whole thing hits the ground at the same time. Yeah. Hard to move a guy like that. And I, and I thought, wow, that's Well, 3.30 also doesn't hurt either. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's no true. doubt. But, uh, uh, but he's, we, put, he's put together a nice year for Couldn't ask for guy. any more from a rookie. I, I, I was fortunate enough to start as a rookie, and he is so much farther ahead of me in regards to his mental preparation and just his stick to and mm -hmm. also his ability to bounce back from – uh, if anything does go negatively, he has a great next play mentality, which is so hard to do as a rookie. Right, right. Couldn't th we, we've been just very yeah. so fortunate. Yeah. So Let's if you're going to go on Twitter and vote for Mitch or any of the other bills for the Pro Bowl, you write in your post, Pro Bowl vote, and then the player's first and last name. And uh, you can hashtag their first and last name as well. That vote will count double on Dion Christmas Eve Dawkins. and Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah. That 20-yard block when he uh, put somebody yeah. on roller skates there. How many times you guys run that back and film this week? Yeah, I've seen it a few times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mitch, thanks for the time. Have yeah, a great Christmas you with your family, and good luck on Saturday. Thank you all so much. Appreciate you, man. Uh,